Resisting Removal, Julius Austrian. In the years after the Sandy Lake tragedy of 1850, Julius Austrian became one of the most prominent and influential residents of La Pointe on Madeline Island. Austrian, whose name was originally Osterreicher, was a Bavarian Jew born in Germany in 1821. In 1844, he immigrated to America to join his brother-in-law, Louis Leopold, in business at Mackinac. A few years later, he moved to La Pointe, where he operated a fur trading post and general store. Austrian also became engaged in the fish business, furnishing nets and salt and barrels to the fishermen. While living at La Pointe, Austrian quickly earned a reputation for honesty and generosity. He was also known for his large and colorful garden, which was described as being laid out most tastily with a large variety of fruit trees, apples, plums, cherries, as well as large quantities of currants and strawberries. His store and warehouse quickly became the center of La Pointe business dealings, including an important 1851 council between the Ojibwe chiefs and elders and the Indian agent John Watrous. Austrian took advantage of his success and in 1853 he bought up all land and property on Madeline Island that was previously owned by the American Fur Company. Then in 1854 he was the unnamed and de facto host of the 1854 treaty. A year later he officially hosted the 1855 payment at La Pointe. In 1856 Austrian helped name and plat the town of Bayfield, Wisconsin just across the bay from La Pointe. By 1860, Austrian owned 4,000 acres on Madeline Island, and he operated a cooperage which annually turned out 600 barrels of fish, and he owned the island's inn. But in obtaining land and wealth, Julius Austrian has been accused of fraudulent dealings. In particular, in his role as postmaster of La Pointe, he was said to obtain signatures illegally by which he accomplished his selfish ends. Also, as stated by the historical blog Czech Lumbagun History, Julius Austrian succeeded in securing several thousand acres of Chippewa mixed blood allotments along the Pinocchi Iron Range for his benefit, not the tribe's. Ultimately, whether through proper channels or fraudulent dealings, Austrian was a powerful landowner at La Pointe who made a name for himself through numerous ventures and carried great influence at a time of change and controversy.